Now, how do we assess the auditory pathway? Now, there is another test to assess the auditory pathway, which is called the ABR. Okay. Now, this is the test. Now, remember, ABR is a test that assesses only the auditory function up till the brain stem. It doesn't assess the information, the, pro, uh, the, the signal processing above the brain stem. So, to assess the signal processing above the brain stem, we have got some other test called the uh, late latency responses or cortical responses. Okay, we will explain that very briefly later. But as of now, you understand this ABR because this is very, very important. Now, let's come back to the fundamental question. Now, how do we assess the inner hair cell? Now, in a newborn child, now, the important tool to assess the inner hair cell function and also the functioning of the auditory uh, pathway up till the brainstem is ABR. Now, today, ABR is also another important screening protocol. Now, there are two important screening devices we have. One, a OAE screening device and AABR called the automated ABR. Now, this automated ABR is a very simple test which only takes a maximum of three to five minutes if somebody is very experienced to use it okay, to assess the function. Because why do you have to assess it? Because we don't want to miss, miss anything. We don't want, we don't want any stones to be unturned. So you have to test the entire auditory system. So as I told you, the best way to assess the hearing, to restore hearing is to test the entire auditory system. Now, if you ask me a question, can you assess the auditory system in newborns? My answer is yes. How do you assess it? Use OAE and ABR. Now, OAE will test the outer hair cell function. The ABR will test the inner hair cell as well as the auditory pathway. The reason why you have to test the ABR is because there are a lot of conditions where the child may have normal hearing, but the child may not be able to process the hearing. If the child can't process the hearing, again, it is meaningless. Now, some of the common pathologies is auditory neuropathy spectrum disorder. This could be due to hyperbilirubinia. In child with hyperbilirubinia, or what we call it as a juvenile jaundice, it's so a very common auditory disorder, is the auditory neuropathy, which means the signal that is processed or transmitted to the auditory cortex is disrupted due to this pathology. You can even pick up this at a very young age, just less than two, two or three days old. And what you need to use is automated ABR. Now, what this automated ABR does, this automated ABR picks up the information at different points of the auditory pathway and it, it, it gives us a, 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 a pass or refer rate based on this automated algorithm. So, uh, if you have to do it on an adult, we use a diagnostic uh, ABR. Diagnostic ABR, we looked at this five peaks uh, based on the amplitude, uh, latency, intensity, differences and relationships we do the differential diagnosis, which means using this test, we can even pick up pathologies at different levels in the auditory pathway. Okay, this is all how the conventional ABR works. I'll not go into detail about it. Okay, now ABR is a test of neural synchrony and it is not the test of the auditory nerve. So this is very important. How, uh, you need to understand. Now, sometimes you may get you may get a poor ABR. It does not mean the auditory nerve is transmitting. Even if the ABR is absent, the auditory nerve can still transmit because ABR is a test which will only test how synchronously the signal is processed in the auditory nerve. Based on the way it is synchronously processed, we predict the auditory nerve is functioning normal. Now, for example, if the auditory nerve is not fun uh, transmitting the sound synchronously, okay, the ABR will be absent. But remember, it does not mean the signal is transmitted. Now, to overcome this particular uh, 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 fallacy, we use cortical potentials. Okay. Now, uh, I will go straight to the cortical potential. Now, you look at this. These are some of the uh, uh, important special functions of ABR. There are, there are different parameters in ABR that you can do. I, I mean, if you, if, you, if you give me an ABR device, I can definitely do at least... 20 to 30 different types of tests to assess different functions of the auditory system. 
Okay. Now, this is not very sophisticated. It all needs a lot of information and knowledge on how to optimize the parameters for each test, the test setup, picking up a lot of, uh, to, to differentiate between the false response and the true response. But it is definitely possible. It is, it is a little uh, uh, complicated. But if you get used to it, if you're using it and routinely, it becomes much easier to do it. But because we have an institution and, uh, and we do a lot of research, this is some of the routine process in our, in, in, in our organization. But however, however, clinically, it is not uh, done in, in many places uh, because clinical ABR and the research ABR is totally different. So what I'm trying to tell is um, with using an ABR, you can definitely pick up most of the pathologies in the auditory brainstem. This is a, a simple example of a different uh, uh, way how you can even see this, uh, assess the different neurons in the auditory nerve. You can even assess the new neuronal contribution in the auditory nerve, possibly using an ABS. And you can even pick up uh, tumors in the auditory nerve. Even if there is a very minimal tumor of the auditory nerve, you can even pick it up with the ABR. Now, as I told you, uh, ABR is only a test of neural synchrony. But, you know, you have different tests called the middle latency responses, late latency responses, cortical responses to assess the auditory functioning up till the auditory cortex. Right. Now, this is the auditory cortex. Now, I'm going to explain something very, very interesting and in which we very often use it in our uh, 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 lab for even clinical evaluation. Now, this is the auditory cortex and this is the visual cortex. Now, the auditory cortex is a seat of sensation of sound. The visual cortex is a seat of sensation of vision, right? Now, which means if you give any electrical information to this particular part of the brain, you will hear it as sound. So, which means to put it very simple, if I put a, if I if I put two electrodes and give an electrical charge to this uh, uh, auditory cortex directly, you will hear sound. Similarly, you will see colors or light in the stimulate. Right now, how do you assess the function of the auditory cortex? Now, you at the this is the <coughs> excuse me excuse me. The auditory cortex is right here. Okay, this is the auditory cortex in the brain. Okay, any signal that reaches this part of the brain, you will hear it as sound. Right now, what what does this particular auditory cortex contain. This is called the Heschel's gyri. This is called the Heschel's gyri of the auditory cortex. Now it has got six layers. There are a lot of neurons in these layers. When the signal is transmitted in the neuron, the neuron responds to the particular signal, right? And if you place two electrodes here, you can measure or you can read the transmission, right? You can read the transmission. If you can read or measure the transmission, you can predict what is happening here. That is how the cortical potential works. Okay, so this is how the neuron transmit. You put two electrodes, and we can measure the the transmission. Now, how is it important? Now, we use it for different conditions. Number one, we use it for assessing a child's hearing when ABR and OAE fails, but if the child can still hear, we can assess it. Right. We can assess the development of the auditory cortex. Now, this is very important. What happens is the auditory cortex develops every day. What do you mean by development? When the child starts hearing and listening to a lot of sounds, the neurons in the brain, especially in the auditory cortex, multiply. Okay. This is called maturation. Okay. The neuron matures and it starts multiplying. The more sound you hear, the more neurons. The less sound you hear, the less neurons in the auditory cortex. Okay, this is very, very important thing. Now, I mean, how do you measure it? Now, what happens when you have less neurons, when you have less neurons, and if it is un in in immature? So, uh, people in the medical field know what is a, a maturation of the nerve cell. Maturation of the nerve cell is the formation of the sheet, the myelin sheet around it. Right. The initially, the myelin sheet may not be formed, and over a period of time, the myelin sheet forms and the nerve matures. And when the myelin sheet forms, the, the, the signal leak is less, so the transmission is faster and better. When the myelin sheet is not formed, the signal transmission is very slow because there is a lot of leak. Okay, this is like an insulating a wire, a copper wire, and, and, and passing the electrical signal. Now, when the wire is not insulated, 
there's loss of energy. When the wire is insulated, there is no loss of energy. So when the wire is not insulated, when the neurons are immature, when they are not insulated, you get a peak like this. This is the this is the cortical response, and this peak usually you get it at 250 to 300 milliseconds latency, or even 500 millisecond latency in a very young baby. As the child develops and start listening to sound, when you keep on recording these things, what you will see is the latency of the peak will keep reducing, which means the auditory neurons is maturing. The, it is getting insulated, which means it is here the auditory cortex is receiving more sounds. Okay, by measuring this change in the latency, you will able to measure indirectly the maturation of the auditory cortex, right? And this is the different pattern of uh, 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 of the auditory responses. Aud I'm sorry, the auditory cortical nerve responses. And uh, by measuring the uh, latencies of these particular signals, you will be able to uh, measure the maturation of the auditory cortex. Now there's another test called the auditory steady state response. This is a this is an automated test. This also measures is an objective test. Now some children may not be able to respond to the sounds properly. So you do this test and automatically you can measure the hearing sensitivity.